Well, as we welcome springtime, the chirping birds, the new flowers. <laughs> That We're was also, beautiful. It was an, it's a moment. <laughs> We're also welcoming allergies. A chew. That was a even better. This morning, Dr. Roger Friedman, a local allergist who's been with us all morning, answering your questions on social media is here now to discuss that a little bit more. He's with Ohio ENT and Allergy Physicians. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. You don't look like your eyes are watery. No problem so far. Because I'm on lots of good medications. Good man. <laughs> good man. I'm a long-time sufferer and, and, and uh, have taken my own therapy. So it's good. I see. It's very good. Well, you're answering a few questions in there. We have a couple of yeah. our own. Sure. Number one I'm concerned about. Can you develop allergies later in life? Absolutely. You can. Yeah. I've never had them. So what happens is you inherit the potential to have allergies. Okay. So you inherit that potential, but it may not show itself until later in life. Okay. It depends on what you're exposed to early in life. It depends what illnesses you get. It depends. It may depend huh. on even things like immunization, stuff like that. But there are a lot of factors. And then so you can go through life merrily and not having any problems and then suddenly end up having allergies later on. See, my, my mother terrible allergy sufferer. My father, no. Yeah. Uh, all my sisters, yes. Yeah. Me, so, no. My daughter, yes. My son, yeah. no. So, so it's so weird. So you inherited the, the potential and you okay. just didn't have the right switch that turned it on at that time. And yeah. so it waited till you got a little older and, and showed itself. My turn on switch is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, we do we want to? No, uh, never mind. Um, so lately I've been seeing, like, there's a new brand. It used to be prescription only, like Nasacort, yeah. mm -hmm. and I forget the name of the Flonase. other one. Flonase. Flonase, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But now I'm seeing them on the store shelves. Correct. So the, what, what's the difference the, between the two? And the the um, nasal steroids for the past 25 years have been our, probably our most effective treatment to treat allergies. They, they're wonderful medications when used properly and safely. Mm -hmm. And recently the FDA over the last uh, year has decided that they're safe enough that they can be made over the counter. They're the same drug, same medication, same dosage, same everything as the prescription type. Ah. And so they work very well and uh, it gives easier access to patients and frankly less expensive now fortunately because the, the nasal steroids as prescription medications are fairly expensive. Are there any advantages or disadvantages? There may be some advantages with certain nasal steroids that some people may find it more palatable. In other words, some of the nose sprays smell a bit. Some of them smell like flowers. If you don't like that, it's annoying and you may want to try a different one. Oh. There, there's also some dry powdered nose sprays. These are the <laughs> over-the-counter are Flonase mm -hmm. and Nasacort. They're aqueous and water. And again, those are very soothing for some people, but others don't like it dripping down the back of their throat. Oh, that's Whereas true. the powdered ones, will still our prescription and, and uh, may be more preferable for some people. And then a quick quick, quick follow-up. Mm -hmm. Is there any time limit? I mean, do you do it for two weeks and you stop, or can so, you do these nubs so non-ending? The, yeah, in children, we're a little bit more cautious because they can sometimes affect the nasal mucosa. They can affect your growth rate a bit, too. Oh. So we don't want children to use it 365 days a year for a nasal steroid. Um, for adults who are already fully grown, and if they don't have cataracts or glaucoma, those are two things you have to watch for, then you can be used fairly regularly during a bad season. Okay. We tend to try to keep them on it for their season. So whether it's six weeks or three months or six months, if it gets beyond that, that's probably the time when you want to see a specialist anyway to, sure. to consider other therapies. Well, you've been sitting in Social Media Cafe, and we have a few questions here that yeah. we'd like to go to from our Facebook page. Amy says, I'm told that the fluid buildup in my ears is caused by allergies. What can I do to relieve that pressure other than just medications? <laughs> so... It's true. We know about 15 to 20 percent of chronic otitis media with effusion, fluid in the ears, middle ears, can be due to allergies. And some of those patients will end up needing ear tubes to drain the fluid. Oh. But also, if we can prevent that, treating the allergies can prevent that. And we can prevent it one of you know three ways. We can try to avoid the thing you're allergic to. So again, if you don't want medicines, if you're allergic to a cat, try to see if you can give the cat away. That doesn't work out very well with most no. of my patients, yeah, but, that won't work. But, it, but it's an option that we <laughs> right, talk about, right. uh, or our dog or things like that. Trying to, trying to get rid of dust mites in the house to try to cover mattresses, pillows, and have no carpet on the floor or stuffed animals. Those are helpful things. The second way is, of course, medications, and, mm -hmm. and um, most of the medicines are really pretty safe, but I understand people's concern about medications. Mm -hmm. And then the third way is allergy shots, allergy immunotherapy. We're, which is probably our most natural treatment. People have asked all morning, what natural things can I do? And actually, allergy shots, we inject you with minuscule quantities of the thing you're allergic to, and you develop a protective antibody oh. where before you had an allergic antibody. And that's the one way you can actually 
cure allergies over time. Wow, that's interesting. Now that's natural, but that's time consuming too. You Absolutely. can't just do it like and you're done. No, it's not. Um, it, 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 well, hopefully you are done eventually. Yeah. But, you, yeah. but you're completely right. It, it does take a lot of time. And that's why we try other medicine, sure. medications and methods first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we also heard from Patty who said, I have seasonal allergies. I've taken Zyrtec for quite some time. And I've noticed increased runny nose, itchy eyes. Is it time to switch? Yes. There, and, and there, again, are a couple of choices there. She can try a different antihistamine. She could try an Allegra or Claritin or Zizol, any, any number of ones you okay. can try. Some people will, one antihistamine will seem to stop working, and you may go to another one, and it may still work. Most of the time, though, if your antihistamine like Zyrtec stops working, it's probably time to go one of the nasal sprays. Oh, and okay. those are the, again, nasal steroids or nasal antihistamines, or now we even have one that's a combination. So we've got a lot of options for her that, that can make her better. Wow, like Fabulous. you said, it's a great time to have allergies, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's 2015. We, we, we do have lots of good medicines available, fortunately, and treatment. Good to know. Yeah. Dr. Good. Freeman, thank you so much. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Speaking of allergy season, Cameron, he's out in the thick of what could be an allergy problem for some. <laughs> he is live at the Ohio Wildlife Center. We're going to check in with him next.